Well, we're delighted to be joined from our Washington studio by Ricky Ellison, founder and chairman of the Missile Defense Advocacy Group, the expert voice in the U.S. on missile defense, and an influential source of support for all nations threatened by rocket and missile attack. Ricky, welcome. Welcome, Barbara. So, uh, let's start with North Korea. And it's been five full months since Kim Jong-un's latest missile test. And with the president now prepared to be the first sitting U.S. president to meet with a North Korean leader, he's suddenly become uh, a very honorable man in Trump's eyes rather than little rocket man. <laughs> so what's your take on this? Uh, do you uh, believe that disarmament, nuclear disarmament, is possible? Well, I think it's posturing, and obviously he's already stopped his testing uh, since November. Um, so this is just a reinstatement of that and, and sort of a concession to the president to move forward with it. I think it's much bigger than denuclearization. I think it's the end of the Korean War, and that's what President Trump is positioning with China, I think, would have to be the big deal. Mm -hmm. And I'm not too confident that we'll end up with a complete denuclearization, because they're going to have to guarantee security for the North Korean leader to have a deal at that magnitude. So he's probably going to have a limited amount, and we'll be okay with that, as long as we have the missile defense capabilities in the theater today. And that's the other key thing, is that the president could not negotiate with him, could not meet with him if he was not 100 percent sure and confident that his territory, Guam included, is right. completely defended against any type of uh, North Korean missile. Well, uh, he has pledged to shut down his main nuclear, uh, his main missile test facility, and he's um, put a moratorium on the intercontinental range ballistic missiles. Again, He's welched on his word before. What makes you think that this time yeah. it's serious? Well, yeah, that, 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 those are just words. And, and again, you have to verify that. And, and nobody's been able to verify anything that, at that magnitude with him on this. So what we've seen is, is more important that there has not been any physical testing. And that, that's remarkable for the period of time that we're in considering what he did the last two years. Mm -hmm. So there is... You know, there is a good environment to move forward with some sort of negotiating, some sort of deal that I think is positive for everybody. Hmm. Now, moving on to Iran, you might be interested as a three-time Super Bowl champion that a local, uh, <laughs> a local Israeli news columnist today characterized French President Macron as a star quarterback in a Hail Mary pass in attempts, a collective European attempts to convince Trump not to nix, but to fix the deal with a backup agreement solely on uh, ballistic missiles. What's your view? What are you hearing from Washington? Well, I think it's more like the, uh, I think it's more like the defensive back that missed the final tackle as as the receiver went in to to catch the ball against the Vikings game. No, I, I think it, you know President Trump is a deal maker. So it, it can go either way. It can go uh, off that deal or it can be a complete new deal. As you know, Iran has, has done missile, def missile uh, testing and moving forward with their ICBM without the intent of that treaty. So that has to be stopped. And we've seen what Iran's done in proliferating missiles and what they're doing in Yemen now. And, and testing and developing those kind of equipment, they are clearly out of the intent of that treaty that we signed. So that's going to be dealt with. I think the president is strong. Uh, Bolton is going to be very strong on this. So we'll see, what, we'll see how that goes. But I think there's not, we're not going to stay status quo with that deal. Now, what is your organization's um, uh, stand on the deal? You advocate keeping it in place but bolstering it with a side deal or completely changing it? No, we have to we have to limit and stop Iran from developing ICBM capability and nuclear weapons. Completely shut that down. So that that needs to be number one. And how they do it, you know, if they can do it with the add-on deal or if they can do it with a complete deal, I, I don't care as long as it stopped. But they've taken advantage of us. You've seen it. Yeah. Um, the the Middle East has seen them take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And what is the relationship, in your view, the, um, the experience of the Iranian deal and the likelihood 
that uh, America would pull out of this deal. How does that fare in North Korea? Well, I think I, I think the North Korea is the bigger one right now to, to see how that proceeds on mm -hmm. it. Because if the North Korea deal is not done, there's going to be proliferation from North Korea to Iran. And that is a serious concern. And if that does take place, I think, you know, the good chances of that the Iranian deal will be completely put off the table and they will start over because of that. If the North Korean deal goes forward, I think there'll be less pressure to break from that deal. Mm -hmm. Now, um, your organization very closely tracks uh, missile defense activity, uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE efforts to defend against Houthi launched um, missiles from Yemen. Uh, there was an interception just this week. What kind of lessons uh, do you think should be clear uh, after this protracted uh, war against ballistic missiles in the Gulf? Yeah, I think Iran's learning more about our, how to defeat our missile defenses than we are about it intercepting their missiles. So they're, they're trying all different tactics and, and times and where the ranges are. Our issue with, with Saudi Arabia is getting these systems, they've got a lot of systems, right. much more integrated together. So they're not, they're, you know, they're, they've got these systems set up separately and not fully integrated to have a layered defense, mm -hmm. as you do in Israel. That needs to progress to a situation where we can have much more confidence in, in putting a layered defense up instead of just one system and anything flies over it, it gets shot down. But Iran is definitely learning on how to, uh, how to challenge the Patriot systems over there. Well, you mentioned Israel and uh, uh, CENTCOM Commander Vodal was here this week. Uh, the Israeli Defense Minister is in Washington now. The subject is Iran. Being in touch with uh, the folks in the Gulf as you are and uh, the officials here in Israel, is there room for uh, lessons sharing and collaboration to hone missile defenses region-wide? Well, I think there's a lot of good things that have just happened. We had the big exercise in Israel, and what happened with the Syria strike, we were ready to defend Israel if, if, if that went the wrong direction mm -hmm. and Syria or Russia took on offense. So, so we are very confident in those capabilities. The, the, I think that one of the great things that happened is the Poland deal for missile defense, the $4.3 billion deal two weeks ago, is including the David Sling of Israel. So that weapon system that you've created to intercept that's higher than the Iron Dome and below the THAAD right. is now as a real system in another foreign country that's gonna do that. And we need to do more of that because you've got some great technologies that have been developed, tested Absolutely. and proven, and that can help defend other countries. And I think that's the first mm -hmm. major breakthrough that we've maximizing seen. Maximizing uh, the U.S. With, taxpayer. With the weapon system. Maximizing the U.S. taxpayer investment in these systems. Ricky Ellison.